Mr. Khalid Galant. Good morning, Mr. Galant, and welcome to Morning Live. Uh, good morning. Please just explain to us what happened yesterday at the hearing. Uh, um, we uh, had an agreement uh, with the tribunal and with the athlete that we accepted uh, the expert report, the scientific report from the athlete proving uh, the probenicid um, contamination on the gelatin capsule that he used. Uh, he provided affidavits from uh, the pharmacist um, and also um, reports uh, from uh, scientists uh, explaining uh, how the probenicid, uh, the effect of the probenicid on his sample and why he tested positive. Um, our experts um, that we consulted um, supported that and couldn't um, uh, rule it out. Uh, so we have to give the athlete then the benefit of the doubt, uh, and we accepted uh, his uh, explanation for contamination, of contamination, sorry. We are now sitting on the final Friday of August. This result became public quite early in July. Why has it taken so long? Uh, well, with all these uh, samples, um, there is about a two-month turnaround. Uh, with the samples, we had issues uh, in the lab where someone passed away, um, and that uh, caused a further delay uh, in the processing of the sample and uh, the reporting of the results. Whenever we get a, a, res a positive result, we also have a review process, which takes up to three to four weeks. So that unfortunately adds um, uh, to the delay. With Mr. Impey's sample, there was an um, unusual delay that wasn't normal because of the uh, death of a lab uh, technician um, uh, during that period. Obviously, for somebody like Daryl Impey, who makes his money from cycling, he is a professional cyclist. He's lost a lot of money, which is making the newspapers this morning. Ha have you guys considered this? Um, I mean, it's a major thing for an athlete to not be able to compete, especially for two or three months. Uh, well, you know, that is an unfortunate part of, uh, of the process. We have a responsibility and we have to perform our due diligence and we try to uh, do that due diligence as quickly as possible um, with the most vigorous process. Uh, we charged the athlete and the athlete uh, accepted that and pleaded guilty. And so the process has had to unfold. Un unfortunately, uh, we don't have control over uh, where the athlete competes and where he doesn't compete during the... Uh, because we provisionally suspend the athlete when the investigation um, is underway. All right. Do you guys foresee that uh, something like this will happen in the future? Because like you said, it was extraordinary circumstances that caused this to really be a drawn-out case. Will there be any other incidences like this, or are you quite uh, safe in the knowledge that this will be the last time that maybe such unforeseen circumstances would t take place in order to get a case concluded? Well, you obviously use the word extraordinary and foreseen, uh, and that's exactly what is, uh, is and uh, extraordinary and foreseen. We normally don't uh, repeat. Uh, so, again, uh, this, this situation was uh, uh, extraordinary and unforeseen. Have you issued an apology to Daryl MP, maybe about the slow process? Uh, again, we do our due diligence. Uh, we were in the hearing um, yesterday, Mr. MP. I certainly not ask us for an apology because both him and his legal team understand uh, the process um, that we have to go through. So, uh, again, we have to discharge our mandate. So, uh, again, we don't feel it's necessary to apologize for discharging our mandate. All right, lovely stuff. Thank you very much, uh, Khalid Galant, who is the CEO of the South African Institute for Drug-Free Sport. We really appreciate your time here on Morning.